Hello and welcome back, Sleepy What's It here, and I have a slightly delayed but new video for you. I apologize for the delay in getting this video out. I had to travel for work for a week, which I had planned around, but upon returning I was sick for three or four days there, so that kind of just screwed up my entire schedule for getting things done. We're now back on the horse, painting and producing videos. So in this video we're going to continue our series on painting Grebo Games' P-Orcs, which are their uh, Cutimals uh, Orc. Uh, Blood Bowl uh, team. I the previous video in this series I did basic uh, prep and assembly, so magnetizing and basing and all that fun stuff. I'll put a link down below so you can go see that one if you haven't seen it already. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at painting all of the brown furred boars that come in this team. So this includes the big boar, which is their troll equivalent, and their four black boars, which are their black orc blocker equivalents. With this team, I decided to go with a base green color scheme with white accents. This is what my other orc team has, which I'm replacing with this team, so I want to keep the color theme going. And I'm just a big fan of green, as you may have seen from the channel art and things like that. For aesthetics and style, I wanted to put push a little bit more into not exactly a cartoony look, I guess an illustrative look might be the best way to describe it. So clean, some shading going on, but not like a super high contrast or super realistic paint job on these. So I'm eschewing doing things like true metallic metals or non-metallic metals, doing a more subdued uh, type of metallics and things like that. This is both uh, for ease of my sanity and also just kind of playability because I want these to read a little bit clearer. My other orc team, I was trying to go more realistic and I went super dark with it and yeah, it, it didn't work. So let's get into it. So the first color that was painted on all these models is the brown fur color. I first based this out using Saddle Brown by Reaper. This took a couple of layers to get uh, the opacity to the level that I was happy with, but I think I was going in a little bit thin with glazes to begin with. Once we had this established, I then created a wash out of Nut Brown by Reaper by using a bit of water and their wash medium and ran that over the entire model. Uh, dragging down with the brush so it collected a little bit more towards the bottom. This was to establish some of the shadows and shading. I chose not to go with something like a Nuln Oil or an Umber or an Agarx Earth Shade, any of these dark uh, uh, shades that you traditionally use, because I'm trying to avoid creating a really super contrasty model. I'm trying to achieve, as I said before, more of an illustrative or almost a cutesy look to it, so I'm trying to avoid those extremes in color. Uh, so that's why we went with this for a wash. After the wash dried, dry brushed it with Saddle Brown to brighten it up a little bit and establish the base color again. And then did a final highlighting dry brush with Desert Stone to pick up the details, lighten up the nose, things like that. You'll notice later in the video that all of the bristly hair areas on the malls are all of a sudden a little bit darker. While working on the other colors, I realized I needed to differentiate between the body fur and the bristle areas a little bit better. So how I achieved that was actually using a little bit of watered-down Nuln Oil to give it more of a black-brown look. Um, this, I think, worked out well. This kind of gave the difference in areas as much, but didn't make the model over-contrasty. I didn't actually come back and do any dry brushing or anything like that, because I just wanted to darken those areas, and I really liked how it turned out on these models. So the next color I painted on all the models was the green armor bits. Because I knew I was going to be painting the bases a grass green color, I needed to differentiate the two greens I had on the model. So the armor is done in a slightly more yellow limey green, whereas the grass is going to be a slightly more blue green, just so you have distinctively two different greens on these models, as opposed to, oh, you just used one green everywhere. So I based out using Cat's Eye Green by Reaper, which is probably one of my favorite greens. Then I shaded everything using a wash made from Nega Green by Reaper. And then I went into highlighting. Highlighting here with, and dry brushing was a little bit different than I normally do. Normally I would dry brush with uh, one color, let everything dry, and then come back and do a second highlighting layer to establish everything. With these models, what I actually ended up doing was kind of rapidly dry brushing Cat's Eye Green, then Dungeon Slime, and then a little bit more Cat's Eye Green back into it. This was because I was finding that the Dungeon Slime, I didn't like how it was a little bit more yellow than I wanted, and I didn't like how it was highlighting. It was over, it was getting a little bit too uh, wide range of contrast for my liking. So I quickly went back in with the Cat's Eye Green. So this was originally intended just to darken it out again, 
but I realized that because I wasn't letting the paint completely dry uh, after the dry brush, this was actually doing a little bit of a wet blend type thing. I guess we could call it a dry blend, something like that. Anyway, I like how it turned out. I really like the smooth transition I've gone here, and I like the color. So if you're trying to reuse these exact colors, I it's not just a straight dry brush here. So now that we have the green armor painted, the next uh, step is to paint all the white armor sections. I'm not a big fan of how this turned out because I found the white, it came out a little bit flatter than I was intending. This I think was predominantly because I used too much of the pure white that's meant to be more of a very faint edge highlight and it just kind of overwhelmed things. So I based out using Misty Gray by Reaper, which is a light gray, which I thought was a good base choice. I then went in with a bit of watered down non oil and ran it along the edges and such to do a little bit of a lining, getting, defining the boundaries a little bit. Unfortunately, this kind of made the white a little bit dirty, so there's a lot of cleanup required here, and this is kind of where things went a little bit south on me. So the next layer was Off White by Vallejo, which was meant to be more of a thin layer building up, but because I was doing so much touch up there, I ended up with a lot of it. And then I was intending to do basically thin edge highlighting using pure white, but I kind of went a little bit overboard with that, and that's kind of where we lose a lot of the depth of the color. Overall, I still like how it looks. It's not horrible, so I didn't really want to go back in and try and repair all that, or like redo it and risk taking out the green and the skin tone, so I kind of just live with it. But if you're doing this yourself, white as always, you have to be careful that you're not using too much of that top range where you kind of oversaturate with the brightest colors. Now that we have all the core colors uh, dealt with, uh, I'm moving on to painting some of the details. So the first thing I did was paint all the gray metal details. As I mentioned at the top of the video, I'm not trying to go for super realistic here. We're not going for an amazing non-metal metallic. We're not doing true metallics. We're just doing something that gives the impression of a gray metal, like a steel, but fits in with the aesthetic of the rest of the model of how, and how I've painted it. So for all of the spiky points, uh, the little pyramids, I based out using cold gray by Vallejo, which is a cool gray as you would expect. And then the top edge that would be facing the sunlight uh, got a layer of light gray. And then the most upper reaches of that uh, got an edge height of misty gray. So this is a very simple way to do it. I think it turned out really well. They're small details, so you can kind of get away with not doing a large number of uh, passes on this. And then for the shoulders that appear on the big bore, that was based out using cold gray as uh, the core color. But there was a thin wash of non oil run over. They just to get pick out some of the details, and then dry brushed using light gray and misty gray. And I like how it turned out. It did exactly what it needed. Gives the impression of metal. Now that we've done all the main important colors on the model, the ones that really establish the shape and color palette there's just all the kind of like small accent details left because I have to paint on the order of 25 uh, Pjorks in t uh, to do my entire team. This is where I started uh, reducing the complexity of what I was doing to save time. So we're going to kind of just rapid fire through what I did here for the kind of final details. So the first thing I did is all the leather strap work on these models, which normally I would do with a thin glaze of hull, right? If you've seen any of my other videos, I love how that turns out. It was a little bit too red and matchy to the um, fur color I had going on already. So I ended up actually using a glaze of Harvest Brown from Reaper, which is just a more orangey but similar type of uh, color. Then for the claws and tusks on the models, I wanted more of a yellowed look to this. So I based them out using faded khaki and then just washed it with sepia uh, from Vallejo and that turned out great. And then for the teeth, I wanted something that was a little bit more bone-like, um, but I didn't want to do my entire bone uh, process, so I simplified it. So desert sand for, to base from Reaper, and then a wash of sepia from Vallejo, which worked out very nice, got exactly what I was wanting for that. And then you can see the little bits of cloth and clothing on the troll. Um, that's gonna be, uh, That was just based out or painted out using black, um, a little bit thinned out. Um, I think it was a pure black from Reaper, but basically any black paint it should work for that. With the entirety of the model painted at this point, the final step was to deal with the base that we had built up in the previous video. So we based out using turf green from Reaper. 
created a wash out of ancient oak from Reaper, then dry brushed using turf green again from Reaper, and then did the high final highlighting using a jade green. As I mentioned at the top of the video, this is more of a blue green as opposed to the yellow green of the armor, so it differentiates the, between the two, and I think it uh, turned out quite snappy. Overall, I'm happy with how this paint job turned out for these models. The green is a nice, bright, uh, vibrant green. It's really what I was imagining. The fur color came out well. You got a differentiation between the bristles and the main fur. They, they have a nice brightness and clearness, uh, clarity of detail that I think works well on the tabletop, and that's really what I was trying to achieve with these models, because my previous orc team, which is based off the standard Games Workshop ones, because I went a little bit dark with them, they're kind of muddy and hard to read, so I was really trying to step away from that and get very clear details. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this informative. If you did enjoy the video, please give the video a like. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. I try to put out videos weekly, sometimes on Monday. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.